Hey guys, welcome to the 185th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, basically what we're going to be doing is building a real quick, simple application uh, that's just going to be using the captures that we generated using the program that we created in the past few tutorials. So basically, a user is just going to open up a captcha image, and then the image will be displayed inside its picture box right here. Then the user will have to enter the text that's in the captcha image. Then when they click the submit button, um, it's just going to check to see if the text that they entered is the actual text inside of the image. Alright, so we're just going to want to double click on this open button right here, and then the user is going to have to open a captcha image. So we're just going to have an open file dialog show, and we're just going to make sure that the user actually does open a file in the open file dialog, or oops, the show dialog. And alright, and if they actually do open uh, Capture image, we're just going to have picture box one's image be the image that the user opens in the open file dialog. So the image location of the picture box will be the path to the image that the user opens. So just OFD dot uh, file name right there. Alright, so then the image that the user opens should be displayed in this picture box. Then when the user clicks on the submit button, we're just going to want to make sure that um, the text that they enter is the actual text inside of the image. But before we do that, we have to have something to compare it to. And remember, when we generated the CAPTCHAs, we make the name of the uh, actual image, the MD5 of the text that's in the image. So we're going to want to retrieve um, the, the name of that image. So we're just going to have to be using the system.io namespace so that we have access to the path class. So we're going to say uh, right here, string MD5 hashed name equals nothing and then we're going to say md5 hash name equals um, basically just the name of the file without the extension so we're just going to use that method right here and the path to the file will be the um, file that the user opens in the open file dialog so this text right here should basically just get the md5 of the text inside of the image alright and then we're just going to want to compare that to the md5 of the text that the user enters so we're going to say md5 crypto service provider right here, md5 equals a new md5 crypto service provider, and then we're just going to want to compare this string to the md5 of the string that the user enters in this text box. So we're going to say um, string, I'll call it blah, equals md5 dot compute hash, and remember we're going to have to convert uh, this text inside of this text box into a byte array and I'm just going to go ahead and copy um, that text up here, so, or this code up, right up here so I don't have to redo it So I'm lazy but anyways so we're just going to do this code right here and we're not going to do random string dot two character array we want text box uh, one's actually text box two's text I think which would be this text box, yep, text box 2, and alright, so this code, like I said, will just convert um, that string into uh, a byte array, so we just want to create a byte array called buffer, set it equal to a new byte array, and the length of this byte array will be the same length as text box 2's text. Alright, so now this will basically just turn on the text inside of this text box into a byte array and then we're just going to want to get the hash of that so get the hash of that byte array that we created which is called buffer and then we just need to convert this md5 into a string since um, the md5.compute hash method returns a byte array so we're going to have to say bit converter dot to string and then we're just going to want to replace um, all of the dashes with nothing. So dot replace all of the dashes with nothing. Okay, so now we're just going to want to say if blah um, doesn't equal um, md5 hashed name, then we know that the cache is wrong. So we're just going to get a message box saying, oops. So we're just going to get a message box saying that you got it wrong. So it's going to say you got it wrong. Else we're just going to have a message box show saying you got it right. So 
messagebox.show. You got it right. All right. So now let's just go ahead and test this out here. It's going to want to generate some CAPTCHA images that we have to use. So I'll generate three. That's probably enough. Put them in my output folder. Oops, output. Start should have generated them. Now let's just open a CAPTCHA image, which should be inside of this output folder right here. We have some nice CAPTCHAs. Open one. All right, so it should be DX4FR6. Submit. You got it right. If we were to enter any other text, submit. You got it wrong. And there you go. And it has to be in the right case, too. So if we did capital DX. 4 F R 6 it'd be wrong. Yep, you got it wrong because it has to be in the correct case. All right, so these set of tutorials that I made for teaching you basically how to create uh, CAPTCHAs was just to teach you generally how CAPTCHAs work and stuff like that. And also, these are not the best CAPTCHAs. Like, if you wanted to go more advanced, you could change the color of each letter in the text or generate strings of different lengths and stuff like that. But I just decided that that would take too much time and really my goal of these tutorials was just to teach you um, just the gist of how uh, CAPTCHAs work. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial, so see you guys.